Welcome back guys. So today we're going to be taking a look at ReDream, the HD Sega Dreamcast emulator for Windows, Mac, and Linux. This thing has been getting a lot of buzz lately. So many people talking about it. I figured, you know what, I got to see what the hype is all about. So today that's what we're going to do is take a quick look at this emulator and see what the deal is. So this thing definitely has some things going for it. Uh, there's one thing that some, you know, it might turn some people off, and that is going to be that this is not necessarily a free emulator. So the light version is free, and then the premium version is $5. This being an HD Dreamcast emulator, if you go free, as you can see here, high definition rendering, you're not getting it with the free version. With the premium $5 version, you can go 1080p, you can go 4K, you got all the options going there. Both versions, your compatibility is 70% plus. You get the Windows, Mac, and Linux binaries with both versions and a high-level BIOS replacement. You do not need the original BIOS to use this. So I definitely recommend peeping out the light version just to see if this is something you feel is worth dropping the 5 bucks for. I did drop the five bucks. I did get the license and figured, you know, five dollars is not necessarily a lot of money, but I can definitely see some people having an issue dropping money for an emulator. As you can see, I think they kind of try to show the difference here. Like, boom, the left side is the light version. Look at that. Look at that blurry fuzziness. And then the five dollar version. Look at how sharp and crisp that is. Hey, you know, to each their own. I'll let you know how I feel once we get to testing some games out here, but let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of these options on the website. So we do have a compatibility tab, and this is just gonna show you what games have issues and what don't. So playable, you have over 80% of the library is playable. And then a handful of other games do have some issues, either certain glitches or they are just broken altogether. So this is a nice little, you know, document showcasing everything that works and doesn't work and what the actual issues are so you can kind of go through this and, and peep it out see if your favorite game is and you know playable or not definitely uh comes in handy scrolling through and looking at this they also do have a quick start guide here just telling you how to install and everything and to be honest this is the biggest selling point of this emulator is that there's really nothing you need to do. So if you do the premium version, all you have to do is download your license and drop it in the directory with the program. So you'll do download Redream, extract it to a folder, and in that folder you put your license and your Redream uh, application will be in there and you just simply open it up and you are ready to go. Pretty good stuff. So they also talk about the BIOS. You do not have to change out the BIOS, but if you want to use the original BIOS, you can. So definitely a good resource here if you want to scroll through some of this. Some of these things have changed with the user interface, I have noticed. So this little tutorial or guide may need to uh, be updated a little bit. But we're going to go ahead and jump into this emulator and show you how it works, what the features are. And do I think it was worth the five bucks? So let's go ahead and open it up and do it. Okay guys, so once you download Redream and you've extracted it into its own folder, pretty much all you need to do is open the application. The re some of this stuff is created after you start it up. Uh, I believe all that was really in here was the config file and Redream. I could be wrong, but I think there, that was all that was in here. All I opened up was the application, was good to go. Uh, if you do get the premium version, you'll just drop your key into this folder with the Redream application and you have the premium version. So that part is pretty simple. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up and get started. Okay guys, so here we are in the Redream emulator. And the beautiful thing with this is that there's virtually no setup required to get going. You only have to do one thing, and that is point the emulator to the directory where your games are. Pretty awesome stuff. So I am using an Xbox 360 wired controller, and it's plug and play. I didn't have to configure anything. It just works. It's set up to work. It works in my user interface here, 
and it works in the games. No issues, no problems whatsoever. And I think that is pretty darn sweet, to be honest with you. It's just so simple, you know, anybody can use it. Now, if you are using a controller or something else that isn't recognized, you can configure that pretty easily. So you would just use your keyboard or mouse and select input, and then select your controller, and then your input device here, you know, I could select either keyboard or my Xbox controller. And then I would go to customize binds. And then here, you have all your buttons that you need, plus a couple of little hotkeys in order to play the games. And you could either use your keyboard or your mouse and just select each input, you know, either click it or hit enter. And then on the controller, press the corresponding button. And that's it, plain and simple. But like I said, I didn't have to do any of that. It was already set up for me. Nothing to do, ready to game. So like I said, there was only the one thing you needed to do, and that is direct the emulator to your games. So as you see here, I added this directory, which I'm just using a, a GDMU uh, folder that I had a handful of games to test out. Uh, but you won't have that when you first open this up. You'll just have add directory. and you would just click add directory and scoot on down and find where your games are and that's it and then it will populate your game list pretty simple stuff I, I think it's awesome that I didn't have to do anything to get this artwork to show up I didn't have to do anything special uh, yeah it's showing the GD menu that's you know for the uh, you, you know the the GD MU for the actual Dreamcast uh, I think I accidentally left that in the directory but the rest of these are all games that boot up. Uh, no problem whatsoever. And I, th I think it's pretty sweet, like seriously. So we do have a few other options that we can go through. System, you can change the region, language, the broadcast, and the cable. I'm not messed with any of this. But the main thing that you may want to take a look at is your video options. And it is keeping it simple here. You have full screen, aspect ratio, internal resolution, and polygon sort accuracy. So I'm leaving this to per triangle. I can change the internal resolution, boost it up, um, and just get going there. If you want, you can leave it, you know, at the bottom of the barrel, 480, uh, and you know, you'll have a, a fairly decent Dreamcast experience. But the higher you go, the the better resolution your monitor supports. Uh, you know, the the nicer and crisper it's going to look. So pretty cool stuff let's go ahead and jump into one of these games real quick and just kind of take a look and see what she looks like so we'll go ahead and select a cannon spike I'll use my controller there we go boots right up no issues um, and like I said you know the biggest thing is the high def uh, you know resolutions with this and I just think it looks amazing to me I know my recordings not gonna necessarily do this justice but I still think, you know, what I'm looking at, I'm sure the recording is going to reflect it, but just not as great as it looks in front of my eyes. And this is really cool, you know, very simple, easy to use. And I think a lot of people are really going to dig this. Um, so here we go. Everything boots up. I'm not really seeing any graphics glitches going on here. Everything's looking crisp and, and beautiful. Uh, you, you know, this is this is something, you know, I'm really digging uh, just the ease of use and simplicity on this. I can't stand, you know, messing with emulators and having to change a bunch of settings and, you know, just, you know, I don't have the time or patience for that. I just want to get gaming. And, you know, I have a lot of experience with a lot of emulators and configuring them and, and whatnot. And it's just with so many things that, that I'm doing now... I just don't really have the time to be setting stuff up, uh, it, you, you know, not not for my own enjoyment anyway. It's just, it's it's a lot of work, you know what I'm saying? It's definitely worth it for, for a lot of people. It's worth it for me as well. I've set up a lot of emulators and got a lot of uh, front ends going. And it's just, you know, if everything was as simple as this, I think it would be a lot more appealing to a lot more people. So I know plenty of people, you know, they, they try to get into emulation and, you know, especially on PC, and it's just such a hassle with some things, you know, BIOS files and, you know, controller configurations, video options, scaling options, 
And this emulator, I, I think, you know, does a really good job of streamlining all of that and just making it a very easy, uh, you know, experience to jump into for the for the end user. Uh, and, you know, the biggest problem is just going to be getting the games and having the games, you know, downloaded. These aren't small games necessarily, but definitely there's resources out there to get, you know, games. You know, I can't really direct you guys, but you, you know what I'm talking about. There's plenty of resources out there if you need to find stuff. And just, you know, having that, if you already have your games in a folder ready to go, I think this is a beautiful emulator. Five bucks. Like I said, a lot of people aren't really uh, going to dig that $5 thing. But I, I, to be honest, I, I think it was uh, money were, you know, well spent on my end here. From what I have messed with, I'm pleasantly surprised and, and happy with spending the $5. I would definitely highly recommend this. I know there's plenty of other Dreamcast emulators out there that a lot of people love and have been using for a long time. Definitely this one to me is worth checking out, you know. Check out the light version first. See if it's something you can get into, if it suits your needs. And then if you want that high definition, you know, go ahead and drop that five bucks. I think it was worth it. I, I'm definitely recommending this. I don't know the people behind this. I have no association with them whatsoever. Like I said, it was more of a thing where I, you know, I was hearing so much about this and I wanted to, to see what it was all about. So just wanted to share this quick little overview with you guys. I'll be doing some more testing, more thorough testing on some things in the very near future, especially if you guys want to see more to do with this. But for today, I'm going to call it quits on this and, and you know, see what else I can do uh, with this emulator and report back to you guys. So Appreciate you guys stopping in, smash that like button, subscribe, do all that cool stuff. Really do appreciate it. And with that said, guys, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. Boom.